Welcome back everyone here to Backstage with this time, no, not the artist that you guys had heard on Cinco de Mayo, which they did a phenomenal job. Sheila with Sheila Music, uh, Sirenia Alvarez that was with us as well, and Leo Ether. This time though, taking some time out from his busy schedule that I just said to him before we went live here is that he's got to cram an NFL season into 10 games. That's how much pressure is put on coach EJ Berber. Coach, first of all, thank you for coming on the show. I do appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. I'm always excited to talk about the Orlando Predators. It's a it's a good time to be a Predators fan, and you guys can listen in to the Spanish version on the games on Sports Radio 102.9 FM. The game, of course, over on Los Mejores 96.1 and Vid 96.1 as well. You guys can download all these apps so you won't miss the action. And this coming up, the next home game, Coach. This is going to be it's a first for me not only doing the Spanish play-by-play -play broadcast uh, with my other uh, two broadcasters, was Alonso and Israel. But the other one is, is going to be, I'm going to try, so everybody can kind of stay along with everyone here, is to do the quick English version, followed by the Spanish version on a playable pace. So you talk about just putting on double duties, it'll be enough to drive me nuts, but it'll be fun. <laughs> I, I can imagine. But uh, coach, uh, first of all, I want to go back to week one, because week one was against Albany. Uh, week one, you guys, the Predators, were in the lead the entire game. Both defense and offense were clicking on all cylinders throughout the entire game. In the fourth, though, we happen to see that Powell had a moment, in, in the offense too, so it's not just on Powell, but I bring him up because he's, he's the quarterback. But they had a moment where it seemed like in both sides of the ball, everybody, like the defense and offense, both struggled to score and obviously allowed the other team to score, which is a good thing until we got towards the end of the game and then of course albany comes back ties it up and we went into sudden death overtime the first one i believe for the afl weekend then came the missed field goal which it seemed like for the predators i'm like oh this is great we're about to get the ball back march right down the field and then winning the game but i didn't realize in afl and it's been a while because i since i watched the game in the afl that obviously it went off the fingertips off McCray. When it bounced off the net, it came down, flicked off his fingertips. And then at that point, that's when, unfortunately, Albany got the ball back and then marched down the field once again and then put up the final three to take it 62-59. Coming away from that, which I still kind of considered a win because it, it being such a big excitement for that weekend, even though it was a loss, but there was a lot of pluses in that game, I think, than it was minuses. How did you feel week one from the win off Albany? Um, I still wasn't, ha I, you know, you, you, we took a loss, so it still was not a happy moment for us. Um, but, you know, we saw some good things. We saw some things with, uh, you know, how everything was going, how players meshed together, um, how certain plays worked with certain players, um, how the management of the game went. So there was a lot of things to be excited about, but there's a couple small things that, um, you know, needed to be addressed. And, you know, going into week two, some of those small things that didn't get addressed or, you know, uh, didn't fully get addressed, you know, kind of came out the second week and we weren't clicking on all cylinders that second week. But again, when you're, you know, West Texas has a, they have a great defensive line and some great players there on defense. So it ended up being a defensive battle in arena, which not everybody's used to seeing. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, when you when you see that, you know, every team has their strengths and their weaknesses. So West Texas had a better um, defensive line than what we faced in week one. So, you know, it, 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 you can't address every single week expecting the same thing out of every single team, every single team. So with that defensive line, you know, it kind of gave us some trouble up front and, you know, it, it presented another issue for us to try to handle on the offensive side. So, um, you know, like I said, week to week, there's going to be a share of challenges. And so with us taking taking a loss um, each of these, these first two weeks, it is forcing us to hammer home the little things that we would have probably skipped over had we be sitting here 2-0. And you'd rather take your your lessons early than in the season than late in the season. And our our goal is to 
take these these losses and these lessons and turn them into uh, a powerful team and a team that has um, more strengths than weaknesses uh, from this point going forward. And you talk about strength and weaknesses because then we roll into week number two, the home opener, big Cinco de Mayo celebration. Everybody had a good time. And I know it was hard because the competition was also with the Orlando Magic that day that they were fighting for their playoff contention to be able to move on to the next round. And it didn't work out for the Orlando Magic either. Now you have the Orlando Bears in the ECHL that are playing the Florida Everblades who are the defending, two-time defending ECL, uh, ECHL champs. And so now they're fighting for their playoff lives as well. But we go into week two and that great feeling, right? Because we, you guys said you had a great week. Um, I spoke with Sean before the game. He came on our show last week and he spoke about how, how everybody seemed to be better coming into week two versus week one. And we know, again, you guys had a, a great week one. We go into week two and we're getting into the first half it was only six nil so it wasn't like you guys were down by a bunch both teams offensively struggled and defense kept each other on on each other's toes there Najim that guy was playing out of his mind in the first I he was all over the place no matter which way you looked on the field he was there even when he was on the sideline waiting for obviously to fall the ball to switch over defensively it's just he was playing out of his mind. I know Sean Williams played you know played really well, and like you said, the Desert Hawks. I mean, their defense. They have what three out of the five because we have two, Najim and Sean, out of the five defensive linemen last year who were the best five uh, in the NAL. So now we're looking at the half and we're thinking, all right, on the broadcast we were talking about, okay, now this is when the Predators are going to explode. Coach Bird's going to come in here. He's going to light the world on fire. Not so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was that was tough. Yeah, like I said, every 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 um, one thing, you know, we have to learn also with other teams. You have to learn that every team's not going to present the same challenges. Um, you have to be ready for what each of these teams' strengths are and be able to adjust. And so with us, we're having a team that has a lot of new pieces. And so you have to, you know, learn to work together, to learn to, you know, prep together, learn to prep for different things and so you know it's things happen and again you have to learn those lessons and you rather learn those lessons early than late in the season now before i get into a couple other things as far as you what you like to do in your personal time the very little that you have especially during the uh, the on season and the off season i'm pretty sure is quite as busy but you have and i i don't ever recall ever asking this from a coach a left-handed quarterback right-handed quarterback is there a major disadvantage for either or because i know you have for example i can use michael vick when he played with the eagles and obviously he played with atlanta left-handed quarterbacks and, and right-handed quarterbacks almost do the same thing just like pat mahomes where there's the focus they spread around the field and i know because being left-handed just like a right-hander sometimes you lose vision from either side and i know there's it's fast moving especially with the arena football league it's even faster than it comes to the nfl is there an advantage to either or type of quarterback that maybe the focus is different, the arm strength is different, or is it just the same, only just different throwing arms? No, it's 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 the it's just, to me it's the same thing with different different throwing arms, but it also it's different in regards to angles, maybe from a defensive standpoint. Um, but again, long as the quarterback's mindset is on the on the on the right right thing their their timing is on the right thing their leadership is on the right thing it that none of that none of that matters um but again it is something different and it, it does present different challenges for teams that face that face them but you know it's it's nothing different than the preparation and knowledge that a right-hander has to come with. But they still have to understand the game. They still have to understand coverages. They still have to understand where the weaknesses of the defense and everything are. And I, I, I believe we have, we have a special quarterback in Drew who understands all that stuff. We just have to do a better job of protecting him so he can do what he does best. Because I think we, we saw him the most this week versus week one, where we saw him scrambling a lot more. Week one seemed like the offensive line able, was able to stand up. And it's got to be difficult, too, because you're playing 
you're playing both sides of the ball, meaning that you're coaching the guys to play defense, can come over offensively, and vice versa. So I know that's going to be tough alone, but we saw where, where Drew scrambled a lot more than usual. The good thing, though, with Coach, was there weren't people yelling in the stands like bring in Vinny, which Vinny Testaverde Jr., uh, the son of Vinny Testaverde, who played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But the good thing was we didn't hear any of that. Usually sometimes you're on the fans, because we know, you know, as fans, you'll be like, oh, this guy stinks. Why don't we bring in this guy and give him an opportunity? So the good thing was that Powell seemed to believe in himself, which was a, it was it was great to see. I know at the same time, too, the pressure, he may not admit it, but at the same time with the pressure of dealing with your hometown team and being in front of your hometown fans, like, man, I, I need to put on a better performance. And you can get in your own head. I think we all know this. Even as broadcasters, sometimes you think you come with your A game, and it's like, did I do a good enough job? But Powell, he held his own, which was good. I know he definitely wanted to see a much better game, but even speaking with Sean after the game, where he said it just seemed like both sides of the ball didn't click this week, and, and we can see it. I mean, for, for all intents and purposes, we can see that it happened, that we just didn't see the same tenacity we saw in week one. Getting prepared now, um, there was a pass on the voodoo this week, so now we get ready again for the same team that just beat us at home. Now you guys take the ride out to Texas. How much without, and we never give away stuff here on the show, but for the Predators, how much difference you guys believe you will see on the field on the next away game versus what we saw here at home with the Desert Hawks? I believe there'll be a huge difference because we saw where we, we went wrong and it was not um, the, the issues that, that we had or were presented to us were not things that we cannot control. Um, there, were, there were issues that we can clean up in-house and long as we clean up our issues i believe it's a night and day difference but again that's what um taking taking getting those learning lessons early in the season help you know you don't want to be in the playoffs and you've been undefeated all year you you just now started being presented with oh we're weak at this point and now all of a sudden you're out of the playoffs well with us we learn those we, we have a great team we, we, we learn we're learning those lessons of what uh, we need to do better uh, early in the season. So can you, we have time to correct those things and we have time to get stronger as a team. So I believe that makes us even more dangerous heading this, you know, from this point for, you know, forward. Now, one big thing, because I'm originally from Philly, but reside here in the Tampa area. So I used to follow the Phil Fasol before COVID came down and they were the last team to go back-to-back -back champions. And then COVID came around and then pff, everything started falling apart. Then you have the Orlando Predators for since the inception they came into the AFL, every year showed up for the playoffs and it eventually ended up winning two titles as well. This time around, with everybody watching now the AFL reconstruct itself, and I know there's going to be a bunch of people, there's going to be rumors and speculations and blah, blah, blah. Everybody can say whatever they want to. We all know exactly where these teams want to be. It's the first year of it coming back, and there's always going to be a little little hiccups here and there it's no big deal we we knew what was coming next year will continue to get better as it continues to grow but being a former player player with the fill of the soul and then now knowing that we get to play the soul as well i for me because i'm rooting completely for the orlando predators but knowing the soul and it's not the same team that we saw prior to covid do you expect and it's probably the hardest way to kind of answer the to answer this or or to question this though without seeing what the soul have done too much so far this season do you believe early on and i know we got a couple weeks before that game happens do we feel like we're evenly matched with the soul or does it seem like the predators have maybe a one step edge above the soul um that's a difficult question to, to, to answer. All I know is, and all I can say is, I, I, I know for a fact we have a strong team. I know for a fact we have great talent. They have guys on their side as well. But I believe wholeheartedly that we are uh, a better team. And if we take care of what we take care of, um, you know, things, things will go our way and, and we should end that game with a W. So it's hard to compare what we have versus what they have, comparing it to back when I played for the soul or against the soul back in the day to nowadays. 
it's a different game, different different players. Um, you know, even back then, you kind of knew the uh, the field of players who was out there, what this player looks like, what this player if he goes to the soul, what he brings to the team. Nowadays, you got a bunch of new guys, so you don't know what each player brings to the table, how that chemistry is going to look over there, whatever the case may be. So it's it's a different atmosphere. All I can speak on is what I have here in Orlando and what I, you know, what I believe we're putting together and what we can put, what we can put on the field. All right. Now, as a head coach, because I know you guys have to wear so many different hats other than inspiring, encouraging, make sure you're being a leader. When it comes to small scrimmages, right? Nothing. And I'm not talking about any major fights, nothing ridiculous. When it comes to the small stuff, because we know in the battle, in the trenches, everybody gets heated. I don't care who you are, what team you play for. We saw it just last night between, you know, the hockey team, between the Bruins and the Panthers, where it, it gets to be that moment. When things happen on the field, and I know the, the last time it happened with Albany, and, and again, it wasn't like anything blown out of proportion. You as a head coach, because I know the human instinct is that we want to just be as aggressive, but not to the point where, you know, we're, we're taking our own name and sake down. But how do you deal with when the small scrimmages happen on the field? And, and again, I'm just using the heat of moment type, uh, type deal, type atmosphere. How do you then take off from being a head coach and being in the game to trying to calm down the situation and still walk away as a leader? Well, you, I'm, I'm one of the calmer guys. I, I have a lot of aggression and anger built inside, but I know how to how to temper it, how to manage it. And so when I, you know, jump in the middle of a scuffle, um, everyone who knows me and dealt with, dealt with me, they, they understand that I'm there to break things up. I'm not there to, um, make everything go crazy or join the battle. No, I'm here. Everybody understands. I'm here to break it up. So if you're if you're yelling at me, understand that I'm not going to be yelling back. That's not me, and it doesn't mean that I can't get to that point. But what's the point? I'm a grown man. That <laughs> I'm here to be a leader. I'm not here to join the scuffle and join the battle. I'm here to get everybody calm. Get everybody get back to what's what we're here for we're not here to fight we're here to play a game so um i'm going to maintain that regardless um but again it's we understand that people get in they 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 get in their feelings and get you know whatever i don't like how they did this or whatever and they kind of lose their their calm state of mind or their whatever they, they, they lose what their target what's it was what they're here for um, but me as a leader, I just have to make sure I'm the one that is calm and the one that can step in and de-escalate the situation, let everybody know what we're actually here for. We're not here to fight. We're here to win the game. Now, normally, we get a question by Gas Pump Guy, and, and it's fun because the guy's on the Pete Shepard Show in the morning over on Sports Radio 102.9 and with Riptide Media. He normally asks like the players, how do you prepare for like what what do you do in order to get ready for the game now you being the head coach of the orlando predators in case you guys are just tuning in ej burt coach head coach here for your orlando predators is on with me backstage with the orlando predators but is there something and i'm not talking about as far as game plan here the mindset like is there something that you like to do on a on a normal basis before game day whether being a song whether being a book what is it that makes coach Burt tune in and focus upon the upcoming game um on top of game plan and all that stay like they say stay prayed up um I stay in my bible i stay talking to god to make sure i ask for grace with my words that way i'm saying the right things and and um you know sometimes i may need help with what to say and that's when i lean on god for um so that's that's my main thing. That's my peace. God's my peace. It's, it's, you know, it's I use him for, you know, what what needs to be said, what 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 I need, you know, what I need to be thinking about. Um, just help me with, you know, guiding me and helping me to to be a leader, be the leader that I need to be. Um, and just, you know, after you know after you know I have my time talking with God, praying, whatever, I need to, you know had my moment of silence to, to, to collect my thoughts and, and 
I guess, direct my thoughts, you know, to where they need to be, you know, and it's a lot of noise, you know, once, once you get into the game, now all of a sudden the crowd's going crazy. There's chirping all over the place from the stands, from the fans, the players, the coaches, you know, I need to have my peace before I go into that. You, when I'm in a game, to tell you the truth, to be honest, I don't hear anything. I don't hear, I don't hear the screaming. I don't hear the chirping like that. It may be, it, it may, it may sound to me like a muffle. Like I don't, I don't hear any of that. It's, it's, it's me being at peace in the situation and understanding I'm not here to do all that. I'm, I, I have my goals. I'm here to win this game. I'm here to lead my men. I'm here to, to coach and put my guys in the right position to win, put them in the best position to be successful. I'm not here to, to lose it, talking to fans and, and hearing other coaches and players chirping at me and whatever. I'm not here for that. So, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I, I have to find my peace before I get into that situation. You know, you bring up a great point because B.J. Daniels and myself, uh, a USF alum, obviously the Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl winning quarterback champion. Um, the one thing that we discussed was, I don't know why, coach, and this is, and it, it's just been within the recent years. Before, anytime we saw how many guys, how many coaches, how many players go out to the middle of the field, what, no matter what it was, even on, on the ice, for that matter, on the rink as well, and on the basketball court, guys would get there, get together and do a prayer either prior to the game, but mostly after a game. And it was well accepted. Everybody just thought about, you know what, it, it, it's a great moment. We're all going to get together here, whether you believe in God or not. But the guys used to form up because they wanted to feel that bond at the end of the game, whether it be in a win-loss or indifferent. But now, today, if it's mentioned in a sport... It's now like shunned by the media. Like, oh, you can't say that. Wait, did Coach Burt just thank God? We have to delete that out. I don't know why that is today. When it, To me, it makes no sense because in the morning, I will use myself, for example, is that I wake up in the morning, I thank God for awaking me in the morning because without him, I don't wake up in the morning. It's just that simple. So throughout the day, we have those challenges, right? That we know we jump in the car and we're going to our destination and here comes that detour, you know, that accident that could possibly happen. But we, because we were, we had that vision of saying, all right, let me look out other than just what's going on in front of me. Let's see what's going on around us. And if we think about it, when it comes down to it, God looks at you, me, our moms, our dads, sisters, brothers. So it's he's one person, but with many visions. Mm -hmm. So when we go back and we take a look and we say, without him, we don't have breakfast. We don't have lunch. We don't have dinner. We don't have family. We don't have anything. Whether you, Again, whether you believe in the man or not, it's just the way it is. For us who believe and we thank him and praise him for what he does, I just don't understand for the life of me, coach, why all of a sudden the me is like, you can't thank God because he wasn't the one that did anything. No, think about it. How are you here today speaking in that microphone and telling me it ain't him that puts this together. It is him that puts all the stuff together. So why are we so, and not everybody, but I don't understand the disconnect anymore that it's, it's now God is like the new four letter word and it doesn't make any sense because he's only a three letter word and he gets the most praise out of those three letters. I feel like people kind of, you know, you know, when I compare it to being, being a kid and you're, you're graduating high school, you're first now, you're going out into the world and you don't understand how important family is. You don't understand how important is a football player or whatever, you go faith, family, uh, then football. You're, you don't understand everything and you have to go through some things to understand how important it is to have faith first before anything else. So as a kid, you're you're in college, you're living life and you're going through some stuff and now all of a sudden everything gets, you get weighed down by life. Now all of a sudden you're seeking answers. Now when you're seeking answers, that's when you you hear that, you know, my, my, my mom, my dad, my parents used to talk about God back in the day and then we start flipping through the Bible. Now all of a sudden you start seeking for something deeper than let me just live life to the fullest now it's okay now i gotta find a purpose in my life that's what you know i compare it to and i'm not here to judge anyone on what they're going through or whatever the case may be they just need to know that if they're ready to have that talk um i'm here i'm not i'm not i'm not like the 
the pastor type. Mm -hmm. I am what they call an OG. All right. I'd have been through it and I got boys who've been through it. So there's, you know, I, I can add, you know, I can, I can add to your life in a conversation. If you, if, if you're willing to listen, I'm not going to beat down your door with, with, you know, with, with my, my life or my thought process, but know that I'm here for peace. I'm here to, I'm, I have a purpose in my life. I, I believe in my purpose. I believe in adding value to anybody who comes across me. And so if you're a chaotic person and all that, you're going to look at me and say, Hey, um, you're not chaotic. You know, chaos seems to want to find company. You know, like they say misery, misery likes company. So, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be like, Oh, he's, I don't have to worry about him. He's, he's peaceful. He's over there whatever. So once you want to get a feel for where my peace comes from, come have that conversation with, me. but I'm not going to beat down your door. And, and, and try to force you to think like me. The best thing for me to do is live my life in a way that will make you interested to say, hey, man, why is he so, why is he, why is he always so calm? All right, come talk to me and find out. But, uh, you know, other than that, I'm not, I'm not here to judge anybody, but everybody knows that, again, I, again, I said, I could say, I say it like, like the, like nowadays terms, consider, consider me your OG. When you, when you ready to have that talk, you wanted to have some, so you can see what I can add to your life. Come talk to me, and either I have I have some of the answers that you're looking for, or I got you know buddies who have been went through the same exact thing that you went through. So either I got the answer, or I know somebody who has the answer, and shoot, we can sit down, and open up the Bible if you're ready for that conversation as well. But um, you know, to, to, to get everything started, like I said, you can just have a conversation with me because you know that I'm not coming. I'm, I'm not coming at you with nothing but good words to add value to your life. But, yeah, I'm not here to take away no value or judge anybody. Now, to me, you you hit on a lot of cylinders there, a lot of Bible cylinders. Put it that way, because my thing is, everybody want. We all hope to to be millionaires, right? In, in one way or the other. And, and that definition could be in money, it could be in faith, it could be in friendships. We all want money because we want to make sure the bills are paid. You got some people that have more than enough, and then instead of just sharing it out, say, you know what, I'm never going to spend this my lifetime. What can I do to give back to people? Even if, if they weren't the ones that helped me along the way, but I've been fortunate enough to do so. When we look at, at life as we continue to evolve, we get older. A lot of times people don't see it as, was God there in the past? We know that he is from the time from birth and in the post life, he's always there. But we have times where we say, if I was rich, if I were rich, I can have everything I want. But if you have God, the way I see it is, sure, I, I would love to have a million dollars where I can help out people. But at the moment, he gives me the faith and ability to say, you know what, let me reach out to this person and see what I can help him out because I've always been, and, and believe, I'm not by any means, I'm not the most uh, innocent person in the world. But the good thing about me is I've helped people along the way and I never forget people who helped me as well. But I've been more rich in helping people than financially. Like I could be broke as a joke and no one would know it unless I say something. But if I, at the end of the day, I make one person happy or I helped out somebody just because I just happened to walk down the street and notice that this person needed a little talking to, I'll help them because God has said, listen, Angel, I don't know why they named you that, but I know this much, you've been able to help people out. When you mention now about people approaching you and saying, you know what, uh, coach, I, I just, I had a moment in my life and I don't understand why. Can you help me with that moment? And it's funny because God puts his face and puts his hands on different people to say, you had to approach me because of what it was that was eating you up on the inside. I think today, a lot of people have that fear that if I were to come to Coach Burt, and listen, Coach, I know we had a bad game. I think I attribute my game because this happened this week or this happened in my life and it's creeping up why is that happening and you as you said that spirituality that a lot of us have but we're scared because the minute that i go up to coach burton i say coach i i had the situation i know we talked about it and you gave me the spiritual guidance but my friend over here 
he's got the same kind of issue, but he's scared to talk to somebody. Why are we so fearful of approaching someone completely out of our circle? We don't know that person from a can of spray paint, but we're so scared because like you mentioned before, you don't judge. I don't do the same thing either, but we just have people that don't know how to come on and say, coach, uh, you're a listening factor. What can you say and how can you guide me to do something a little bit better in my life? I feel like people want yeah they're afraid to be they're afraid of being judged and again i'm no pastor i'm no perfect person i have i'm still working on my cussing demon <laughs> so when you when you hear me talk sometimes especially when i get passionate about this game and what i feel about the team and what we should be doing yeah some cuss words gonna come out and what's good and bad about that you know one i shouldn't be doing it but i'm still working on that but two when you talk to someone who doesn't feel perfect they feel like they cuss too much guess what i look like them i sound like them so they're it's going to make them more comfortable in talking to me not that i'm saying cussing is the way to get people to <laughs> get people to <laughs> comfortable, but like i tell my players all i know how to be is me I'm not trying to be nobody else. I'm going to be completely honest, even if it, it it opens up, if it even if it opens me up to a level where like, man, coaches, coach, coach, coach really opened up. That's all I know how to be. If you judge me, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about how you feel about me. I'd rather tell you, I'd rather tell you the truth and hurt your feelings than lie to you. And that's something I always say. <laughs> I mean, everybody who's had a deeper discussion. I ain't gonna say all my players and everybody's not, hasn't opened up completely, but um, for the ones that had opened up to that level of conversation with me, that's one thing that's gonna always come out of my mouth. I'd rather hurt your feelings and tell you the truth than to lie to you. You're gonna respect that more than me always telling you what you wanna hear at the end of the day. That's so true. And it's and it's it's stuff that we need to hear. See, back in the day before when we played sports, and, and now I'm taking myself back in time here, when coach got in your face, and it was different, he may have, it, it might have been one incident where he might grab like the edge of your shirt, but he wanted you to focus. Like you're, you're saying to coach, what am I doing wrong? He's telling you what you're doing wrong, but you still can't get over that. Like that miss, there's like that imaginary wall that you're trying to get around, but you want to be through the wall instead of trying to figure out like, okay, I need to break down that wall so I can physically go through it after it's broken down. And coaches back in the day, that's what it was. They got in your, because they want the best for you. Not today. When you look and you talk and you see some of these coaches, I understand it's a whole different world, but you can still get that message across just like you said. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth, but that's the best thing because it's like, all right, I know I'm screwing up. I know I'm a screw up. I don't want to hear it, but he's telling me I'm a screw up. And then finally in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, coach is right. Coach, I did screw up. Let me see what I'm doing wrong and then focus upon that negativity and then turn it into positivity and figure out, all right, what? I'm gonna listen to coach a lot more because he knows what's going on. We see parents today though, where they just want everybody to have that participation trophy. I'm not a fan of it. Cause to me, I think is you need to earn the reason why you want to play for this team, why you're on the team and why you made it to the end of the season. Is today's parenting more of too much helicoptering instead of just listening and figure out, okay, we need to make that two-way conversation and make our children and our young adults understand that you are not gonna get everything that you want because it's a two-way street. Um, I, it's, it's tough to judge anyone's parenting, um, but I will say this, um, every, every parent's gone through some things. And so maybe they gone through, through something where they didn't have enough helicoptering or whatever. So, um they went a certain way in life and so now all of a sudden they they may try to be there but they try to be there too much um so it's tough to it's tough it's tough to judge that but i do know that if you don't let these kids make mistakes um they're going to be grown and they're going to make those mistakes in their 30s and 40s that they could have made in their 20s and in, in teenage years and learned a lesson from it um 
you know, as long as it's not nothing crazy. <laughs> but um, but you got to give them a chance to, to make mistakes, number one. And then when it comes to the participation trophies, I don't believe in that year. Your participation trophy is a jersey that you're wearing. But yep. if, if, if you're going to be on my team and you think that anything is owed to you because you're on my team, then you're going to be mistaken because you're going to find yourself not on my team. I don't want people who just want to be on my team just to be on my team. If your goals are not aligned with mine, because again, you're supposed to align yourself with people who have the same goals. And my goal is a championship. And not just the, hey, I'm, I'm with the Orlando Predators. No, I'm here for a championship. That's, that's what I'm here for. So if you just want to be on the team just to say you're an Orlando Predator, it's going to come out when 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 t- when times get tough like us being 0 and 2 so the people who just wanted to you know be on the team and at this point you know my players who are, all the ones I talk to are are angry focused and ready to go they're not beat down so if you're just you know and you can see who's goal oriented who's who's switching up their approach who's putting more film time who's on the practice field learning trying to learn more those are the guys who are going to stick around. Those are the guys who are going to help us win a championship. The guys who are still, you know, they're here and they just want to go to the beach after practice and they're not thinking about getting better. Those guys are not going to be on this team. You know what I mean? That's not that's not what this is for. I don't, the participation trophy, you know, if that, if that was your, uh, if that is how people grew up before they got here, that's that they're going to have to learn those lessons somewhere else because, again, I want to surround myself, and I believe I have surrounded myself with people, with grown men, with uh, like minds. Like again, if you're here, you want to win a championship, and that's that's what I'm trying to surround myself with, and that's going to do nothing but make all of us better. So um, again, there's no to me, there's no such thing as participation trophies, and if you do get one, you need to realize that this is not the end this is not the end goal just hey i got a trophy i got a certificate that says i participated what are you going to do with that that's that's not going to do nothing for you right even in life you have to have some kind of goals you know what i mean even if it's it's sports if it's your job in life you need to have goals and your goal is not to be on a team it's not to you know like like even what do you talk about millionaires your goal is not okay now that you've got a million now what do you do? You're gonna spend it all, and then next you know you're not a millionaire. Like your your next goal should be two million, five million, ten million. Like your goals need to evolve, and they need to stretch you to be a better, better player, better person, better whatever. So if your goals are not being updated after you achieve a certain goal. Now that you made the team, now now there's there's got to be a goal to it. All right, all right, you won a game. Now, now that has to be the next goal. You have to keep revamping your goals and you can't just be happy with, hey, I'm here. Yeah. Life don't care about that you're here. That's so true. It is true because it doesn't mean anything. You can't, on your resume, could you imagine if you show up at a job somewhere and they say, okay, let's look at your resume. Uh, so this is going to be your first job. Yes, but I participated in other ones. So technically, uh, I participated in other jobs, but this is going to be my real one because that's the way I feel about it. Uh, and then if I'm, if, to me, if um, I'm looking at it like, oh, um, so the, you're telling me that this is your resume. And so all I see is just nothing because you haven't done anything. You haven't proven yourself on what you are. And you bring up a great point because you're right. If you're coming to be an Orlando Predator, it's to be a champ. It's to be part of a championship team, a championship culture. That's the way John approaches it. That's the way Sean approaches it. Um, IT John, everybody. That's the way they look at it because the, if John doesn't have money to throw it away and be like, okay, you guys are coming here because it's on my dime. I'm not worried about the AFL or anything else. I just want everybody to come here and have fun. No, he's, he's about making money. He's about making a championship team. And that's why he believes in you as a head coach to say, you know what? This is what I want. I don't want a championship just for 2024, 25, 26, and, and moving on because that's why you retain your head coach. You look at in Pittsburgh for many years, right? Coach Tomlin, same thing. 
Pittsburgh could have gave up. And I know we, we'll talk about him as a broadcaster, but it'll be like, all right, what, what hasn't Coach done? Now this year he's going to load himself up a little bit more. But the Heinz family believes him. Like, you know what? We're not getting rid of Coach because he's not about participation. He wants accountability. And it's the same way that you do it with the Predators. You want accountability. And if that means it's a roster change, it's a roster change. So getting away from that for the moment, and we talk about family and friends and different things we like to do, different restaurants, on the slight off chance that you have during the season, what is something that you like to do that maybe many others don't know that is something to kind of get away from the mindset like, okay, I know I'm a head coach, I'm part of management, I'm part of the Orlando Predators. What does Coach Burt do when he has that moment, quick moment of a getaway? Um, I spend it with my family. Like, they don't, I don't care what it is, as long as I'm with my family. I can come to the house, lay on the floor, let my son crawl all over me. I'm fine. I'm happy. But, um, you know, just spending time with my family. Um, you know, I, I run like a nonprofit um, also. Uh, it has like flag football, soccer, just youth sports. So if I'm not working, I'm not with the Preds, I'm spending time with my, my youth um, program and I'm with my family. Like, if, but if there's any free, relaxed time, it's with my family. And, you know, we'll go to Lou Gardens, we'll go to the beach, we'll go to some little kids event where the kids get to play, we'll go to like a little bounce, uh, rebounders, one of those little jump parks. It's, you know, it's whatever to have, you know, my kids enjoy themselves and you know, be with my wife and, you know, just spend time with my family. That's like, that's, that's me and my free time. All right. But that means we're going to have to get together, go to the beach because as Debbie, myself, my fiance, as we're coming up here on our nuptials on uh, June 15th, uh, it, it's the same. We love the beach. And obviously that's why we're here on the Gulf side because we're, we're two miles away from it, which is a beautiful thing. But we go down to Clearwater. That's my escape. Like it, it, it's stressful enough to run your own radio station, get involved with as many projects I'm in. But I'm the same way too. I mean, and, and family is important as my mom's getting ready to move down here to Fort Myers uh, permanently now that she's retired. My stepfather's retired. That's the best part about it. My dad retired here many years ago. He's been loving life ever since he retired here. So I'm with you as far as when it comes to, to family. The beach, though, that's 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 everything to me. You see the blue skies, warm temperatures. There's nothing like it in Florida. Born and raised in Philly, don't get me wrong. But Florida lifestyle, listen, winter time. I used to do the shoveling snow. I used to do the scraping the ice. Uh-uh, that's not for me anymore. <laughs> Life is all about the beach, which is a great thing. But the last thing, Coach, we know that we're coming up here. Come next week again. We travel to Texas. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard because we saw what happened here in week two. We get the opportunity now to make it one and one at least with with the Hawks. More importantly, one and two for the season. It's it's crunch time now, right? Because we know you the you can't lose from this point this point forward we we just can't lose so now what is the game plan again without giving out away too much and then hopefully are we looking for a one and two season here oh hold on i may have lost coach for a second hopefully he'll be back so i mean he may not have heard the entire thing this is listen we we talked about it prior to going on we may have lost him here momentarily but hopefully we'll get him back this is what happened folks even during and a conversation piece it's just what ends up happening. So we'll wait and see. Give it a moment. And if uh, coach comes back on, we'll wait and see. Sometimes you get a phone call in between if he's on his phone. And I'm back. there it is. Coach is back. Here we go. So I don't, I don't know what you got at the very end before uh, the the phone gave out. We were talking about the beach and, and how your, your parents and stepdad retired and everybody moved down here. That's where we're at. Then that. Then, uh, I don't know what happened. Next thing you know, my Wi-Fi went out. All right. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's what happens. Listen, we talked about it before we went live here. We were mentioning how things, it happens. Things do happen. But, Coach, we're, we're traveling to Texas to take on the Desert Hawks. Uh, and you'll be back here with me come after the, the post week uh, from there as we get ready to go on the road. Because it, it's a couple of road schedules before we're, we're finally back home at the Kia Center. Can we look at, and we know now because we have to start looking at the playoffs, We're minus the one game with the Voodoo, then it means now the season shrinks just a little bit more. 
do we have that great feeling that we can walk away one and one against the Hawks and more importantly one and two for the season yeah uh, like I said I don't I brought in a bunch of guys who understand what the goal is and we're putting ourselves in the position to be that team that I know we can be, which is a championship team. And I see the work ethic, I see the conversations, I see the camaraderie with, with my guys. And so I, I, I see that we are that championship caliber team and we just ready for the next opportunity to prove you know, who we are. All right. Well, listen, Coach, I appreciate your time. As you said, by the way, we are going to go to the beach. That's one thing. If I don't, I'll wait for the offseason. It doesn't matter to me. But we're going to get beach time together with the family because I'm telling you, my fiance and I, that's that's our go-to. I can, The world can come crashing down. God, beach, I'm golden. I'm fine with that. So we're good. But, Coach, thank you for your time. I appreciate it because I know you have to get ready once again to get ready to travel, uh, take on the team. And then I know you guys have practice this afternoon. So thank you for your time. And thank you for sharing your stories with us, especially when it came to God, because I, I don't want people to lose that focus. No, you, you can't lose that focus. If not, it's going to come back into focus. And it's on you to take that in. And, and and learn something from it and do something with it. That's for sure. Well, thanks to Coach E.J. Burt, head coach of our Orlando Predators, and thank you for being with us here backstage with my guest this week, Coach E.J. Burt. And don't forget, next week we'll have on another guest. Sean will be with us tomorrow uh, for a weekly segment on online, of course, on the Sports Radio 102.9. He'll be on with us with Pete Shepard in the morning. And then next week, hopefully, we'll have Coach on during the morning. If not, we'll have another segment just like we had this week. And we hope that you all have a great day. Don't forget that this week, it is the Orlando Predators versus those Desert Hawks. The win is coming. Don't worry, folks. The win is coming. We're going to go one and two, turn things around, and march on to the playoffs. At least that's my belief, and I'm quite sure it's Coach's belief as well. So thank you all for watching this segment backstage with Coach EJ Burt.